ile inaleta watu kwa street kama ume notice kitu ni story ya wale wa soli madokware hiyo story imefanya yani watu wamekuwa so angry na hiyo imetosha kukuonyesha huu jamaa hayuko hayuko in conversant na the ground vile inasema angekuwa kikweli ya conversant na ground vile inasema saiku na tungekuwa tunaona watu tungekuwa tunaona watu wakiwa mbele ya dock tungekuwa tunaona watu unasema yenyewe um jamaa na duera Market Street, Nairobi CBD, just outside Post Bank House. What you're seeing that I'm carrying, this is a water bottle. We have been given this by a good Samaritan. He came up and he showed up by the sunroof and he was now giving out water. We saw that it's in the videos. Um, all of these shops that you can see remain closed. Nairobi CBD has been paralyzed. Little to no activity at all aside from these protesters that you are seeing today. This is just outside city market, the famous city market. <laughs> Choppers that are flying above are presumably considering, you know, checking out the ground and how it's going on live from the ground and the ground scenes. We have smoked in a considerable amount of tear gas. There was a moment we were recording and then the police threw a tear gas canister at us. It is very tense today. These protests have not been like any other. The protests are not so many as you can see, but the effect is felt. Nairobi CBD remains deserted. Clo uh, shops are closed, buildings are closed, big shops including the Airtel smartphone shops and the Airtel shops have been shut down from what we have seen it is very tense rubber bullets thick clouds of smoke it is very 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 dangerous right now at least that's what everyone is saying rubber bullets tear gas canisters the police today are trigger happy we are not feeling safe at all hey, collaborators. Hey, collaborators. Hey, Market Street, just outside Post Bank again. You can see these are flowers that have been laid down, obviously, in memory of the dead. The dead bodies that were recovered in Kware area in Nairobi, at least that's what they have told us. You can hear them chanting, Yote Awezekana Bila Ruto, meaning everything is possible without the Kenyan president, William Ruto. They have, they have closed the roads. You can see pieces of rocks there. You, we can, you can follow me even as we go. This is a man who's holding roses in honor of those that lost their lives along the demonstrations and even in Kwari area in Nairobi County. The roads are closed here. That is Koinange Street over there. But this is Market Street, just outside the famous Nairobi Market. There is loud bangs, live bullets, rubber bullets, tear gas. The roads have been closed here, Koinange Street. The president, I'm about to pressure, he has bowed to pressure, he has dissolved cabinet. What brings you to the streets again? Because he's just making concessions so people can keep quiet. We came out here at first about the finance bill and if he, they would have listened when we first came out we would have gone home and we would have let them do their job but when people started dying for a bill that's when the story changed and there's nothing he can do or say at this point that will not feel like he's making empty promises like he has always done they said the finance bill has been withdrawn we are seeing changes in prices of things already like the diapers and the pads, they still went up even after we complained and went to the streets and people died for it. We complained about the, uh, the levy, the what is it, road maintenance levy, and they said we've had you, we've withdrawn it, but they still put the price up even after people have complained. So when he says he has had us, 
and then says he's uh, dissolved the cabinet. So far, we're not seeing the, the, the things they're saying. They will say one thing, and then a few weeks later, the same things we are complaining about, they're still happening. So we're still in these streets because when they say they're listening, they're not really listening. They're saying things to placate the people so we can go back home and be comfortable like we used to be. But the thing they're not realizing is the time of comfort is over because we are not comfortable even in our homes. In our homes, we are being overtaxed, being overpriced uh, for uh, things we are buying. And they're not even looking at uh, the minimum wage. Like they're support if they want to uplift the economy, they uplift the people first. You cannot force the people to bring up an economy when they're still being pressed uh, with the same rates, with the same companies that are not uh, paying them what is due to them. So it's not about dissolving the cabinet. It's not about the finance bill anymore. Anymore, sorry. It's not about the any other bill at this moment, the hashtag has been, uh, has been trending, Ruto must go. So he should be addressing, if he wants to, he, he really wants to address the issues, he should be addressing, why are people saying I should go? And the answer is, we have lost trust in the government of Ruto, we have lost patience, because what we have seen in the two years they've been in power, these are people who are not there for our interests. And they, when you give them a few moments, we keep quiet, you start seeing the same arrogance that brought us to the streets. So the thing is, they will say they are hearing us and they are not hearing us, and that's why we are here. Today I come to the streets, each and every uh, youth in the Republic of Kenya are marching to the streets. But personally today I come to the streets to fight for land. Today I'm fighting for land. Why am I fighting for land? Because we have homeless people living in the streets of Kibra and despots are taking over our land. Something so fascinating is they are taking lands which are rich in minerals that are supposed to be feeding our nation. Kenya is worth trillions of dollars in terms of mineral souls that can pay all our debt in case we have and feed our nation for five decades. But Ruto has decided not to inject this money in the economic table of Kenya. He has decided to feed the Western multinational corporations with our mineral salts. As we are talking now, our mines are being taken over by the IMF and the World Bank. They are here, and I want to tell the youth of the Republic of Kenya that when we think agriculture is the backbone of the economic table of Kenya, it is actually our mineral salts. We must fight for land. We must fight for those people who do not have land in this nation. People are being evacuated in Kuali. People are being evacuated in West Pokot while we are thinking it is banditry. They are sponsoring banditry to evacuate people from West Pokot because of our mineral soils. We must fight today. And the reducible minimum is that Ruto has to leave office with immediate effect or he has to listen to the voice of the people, which is a voice of God. Ile inaleta watu kwa street, kama umenotis kitu ni story ya wale wasa wali madwakuare. Iyo story imefanya, yani watu wamekuwa so angry, na iyo imetosha kukuonyesha, uu jamaa hayuko inconversant na the ground vile inasema. Angekuwa kikweli ya kwa conversant na ground vile inasema, saiku una tungekuwa tunaona watu tungekuwa tunaona watu wakiwa mbele ya dok tungekuwa tunaona watu unasema yenyewe huyu jamaa na duera alafu still kuna watu wako kwa wako, wako ndani ya hiyo system wajatolewa hata sahi ukiangalia kina mtu kaa bungei ni kome ama ni bungei huyu msana anafaku ametembea kuna police abduction zimetembea hakuna kitu imefanyika kuzihusu eh, so bado kuna accountability kidogo imekosa this is Nairobi CBD just outside the Sarova Stanley Hotel. It is getting tense. We have seen a lot of police presence. The streets are deserted. There are tear gas canisters live on the ground, some of which have exploded, obviously. There's pellets of rubber bullets laying down. 
border border guys are the only people that are allowed to stand around. The protesters have been compelled all the way back. They have been pushed back by the police presence. They have been circling and surrounding the streets of Nairobi CBD, the police, with tear gas, canisters, loud bangs, live bullets being shot in the air. And of course, the tear gas that has filled the air of Nairobi. Nairobi is thick, thick with filled with thick air, obviously, from the tear gas. I want to tell the youth of the Republic of Kenya that in the political class, there is something called fake diplomacy. Ruto is here telling me, oh, young people of Kenya, I am listening to you. You see, I have even fired the cabinet. You see, I am about to fire the PS. You see, I have even fired the legal advisor. If the legal advisor of the president, the attorney general, has been fired, and still we are seeing this kind of problems, then it means they were not the problem. It means Ruto is the problem. If you have to kill a snake, you hit it from the head. That is where might and power is. And I want to tell the youth, do not fall into the trap of fake diplomacy in the name of dialogue. Fight for your rights, fight for your nation. Thank you. Do you think the opposition is hijacking the Gen Z movement right now that we saw them now saying, yes, we want to talk and we want to talk to the government? Then again, after the pressure, they are saying, no, there's no dialogue. As far as the constitution of, is concerned, each and every person has a right uh, freedom of speech. At this pop moment, I do not want to term anybody as an opposition because we gave them a mandate to act as an opposition but they did not deliver some of the critical things we wanted them to deliver. And now the youths are on the ground. If the opposition wants to fight, let them fight for their own personal interest. Let them not involve youth in their own personal interest. We know what we are fighting for. These people are old. When they are telling you that they are bringing change, which change are they bringing? Somebody who is old, which future does he want to change? He's already in his future. I have a future. My fellow Kenya, uh, Kenyans who are young people have a future. That is the future we are fighting for. I do not even have land as a person. My lands are being mined. We must fight for land. We must fight for our right. Do not listen, for, uh, listen at position. Do not listen at anybody. Fight for what you feel is right. Do not be given cheap handouts in the name of selling your future. You are fighting for your children, you are fighting for your country, you are fighting for your land, and we insist that the IMF and the World Bank should come and take the despot, their despot, who is William Ruto, with them. They should leave. We demand that they should leave. If Ruto do not want us to, to, to help him come out of the cage of the IMF and the World Bank, because we are actually helping him, we know how those people operate. He is our son. He was also born here. When we are coming to the streets, we are also fighting for him. He's being hijacked by the IMF and the World Bank, the Western Corporation. When we fight, we fight for him and our people. He asks to allow us to tell him that he is a captive of his own identity. He is a prisoner. And for him to realize, that the moment he will realize that he is a prisoner, that will mark the change in our nation. A majority of the Gen Z's that we spoke to today and the millennials as well, they are saying there is no room for dialogue at all. They don't want to sit down with the president to talk to him at the table. They say he is not trustworthy. They do not want him in office. They are saying one thing, Ruto must go. No, we can't. It's impossible to have dialogue if you are not seeing, like, these people, the people who are prime suspects of these murders, everything, their pictures are online, their names, their jobs, we know where they work as the police, but no case is being opened against them. Yet the DCI can just come up and say they found a serial killer in 72 hours, yet other bodies were being discovered way, way earlier. The perpetrators themselves are not being caught, there are no, no cases against them, nothing's done. So the point of saying dialogue, it feels like just a smoke screen. To hide what is really going on. Right. I find it interesting, honestly, that you say you've heard us, right? And then you fire the cabinet. And then a day after, you go to meet the same parents that lost those children. And then what do you tell them as a president? You know, your children were paid to go and get killed. I mean, what kind of a president is that, honestly? You see, one thing with the president is that he's the president of the republic. He speaks to everyone. Those mothers lost their children. And what are you t telling them? your children were actually paid by an organization to go and get killed. 
Do you see how reckless and careless the president is? That is what is making us angry because we are not feeling, there is no hope for us. We don't feel like we belong to this country. We feel like we are bastards. And then we have those who belong here. Do you see why we are here today? Because of that. And then talking of the dialogue, seriously, every sane person will tell you, how can you sit down with your president to tell him to end corruption? When he was asking for that job, didn't he know that he's supposed to do that? So why are we supposed to go and sit down and tell him to do his job? while he asked for the same job. That is why we are saying just resign. We don't have time to tell you to do your job. I mean, and one thing I can tell the president and any other leader that is funded by the Kenyans, leaders don't get chances. They get tested. One, once you fail that test, that is the end of you. We don't give leaders chances. So we are not giving the president another chance to tell us to go to hell. We are here to drag him to hell with us. That is our message. Right. Yes. Right. He, he insists, come let us sit down and talk. Do you think where we are standing here, you as Gen Z's and millennials, do you think where we are standing, we are at a crossroads? Like, this is my stance as the Kenyan, as, as the Kenyan president. This is where you are standing as the millennials and the Gen Z's. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? We just make everything right by ourselves. Because, look at it this way, we have so many options. I was talking to a friend of mine and he was telling me, instead of all this violence, why don't you just file a petition in court? And I asked him, have we done that before? Yes, we have done it countless times. What does the president and the ruling class do? They ignore the court order. So what do we do? Do we continue suffering? We have degrees. I mean, look at all these young people. They are all learned. They don't have a job. That's why we are here. If we were employed, if we were proud of our country. We wouldn't be here. Personally, I wouldn't be here if I was proud of my country. If I was proud of my president, I wouldn't be here. I am not proud. I feel like I don't belong to this country because what the president does is talk recklessly about matters that touch ourselves, you know, like touch our lives, you know, and that is what we don't want. Trust me, what we are asking is not something that is out of the constitution. It's not something that cannot be achieved. It is everything that con the constitution requires of them. And that's why we are saying there is no need of dialogue. That's just another game. Because how can we sit down with the president? He imports 20 million worth of tea and mandazi from the U.S. Just for us to tell him, you know what, president, we don't have jobs. We are not asking him to create jobs. We are just asking him to give us a conducive environment, to be able to have a hope for the future, to be able to give us uh, the opportunity to have a good life. That is what we are asking for. But since for two years he has not been able to do that, we are telling him, Mr. President, we are not negotiating with you. Pack up and go. And before he goes, he should fire Modavadi, fire his deputy, fire himself, and we are going to have fresh elections so that we can choose people who are sane and people who love their country. We just want people who think with the blood of this nation and are driven by the spirit of every human being in this nation. That is what we are asking for, man. It is not something that is, that is unconstitutional or cannot be achieved. It's just as simple as that. And that's why we are telling the president we are energetic, we are unemployed, we don't have work to do. We will be on the streets. No business shall be conducted in Nairobi, whether you like it or not. He can say whatever he wants to say. We don't care. We will be here. And the media will be here to witness that. Absolutely. Yes. First of all, I want to say, without any iota of fear, but I am not going to sit down on the table to discuss anything with the president. Why? Because everything that we are fighting for is in the public domain. What is there uh, for us to go and sit on the table to discuss with the president? Personal, each and every person, just like I started uh, by saying, each and every person has something they are fighting for. I am fighting for our mines and uh, our mineral souls. We want the Mining Act 2016 to be written afresh. We want it to be amended because we realized that our Mining Act 2016 was not written by our committee members in Kenya. It was written by a technical committee from the IDLO. And IDLO is funded by the IMF and World Bank. So they come here and write rules and regulations for us how to mine our mineral souls. They are currently building multinational industries in Naivasha because of the Mining Act 2016. I want the Mining Act 2016 to be scrapped off. That is one. I want all the people who took part in, in um, uh, the massacre against the young people who were protesting. We want justice to prevail with immediate effect. We don't want stories. Everybody who took part, whether you are a police, we don't want to care who you are. We want justice to prevail for our people who are burned and thrown in the, in, in the quarry. We want our people who are massacred in Rongai. We want justice for these people who are massacred in, in Gedurai. The justice for the young people who are massacred in peaceful protest. We want justice. That is what I am demanding for today. And another thing, 
I do not want to fight for the inclusion. I don't want to involve ethnic extraction or other ethnic e benefits when selecting the new team of the cabinet secretaries. All I want is that this thing should be aired out in the public. We want the vetting to be done through universal, universal suffrage for the people of Kenya to be included in the selection panel of the new cabinet secretaries because we want a uh, full delivery of what they promised us when they were campaigning. As you can see behind me, thick clouds of smoke, running battles, heavy police presence, loud bangs in Nairobi, just like how it was during the other protests that we covered. This has been the order of the day in Nairobi CBD today. But the border guys are still adamant. They remain hopeful of customers, but there is no customers today. Closed shops, shut down buildings, everybody's sneezing. It is smoky in Nairobi today. Reporting for LNN, my name is Robert Rajoro from Nairobi County. Sayunge kwa president, unge fanya aje, usha dissolve cabinet, what next? Hey, mse, sasa uki nuliza ninge kwa orezo. Biyashara orezo ni orezo, wacha orezo wa pige mboka haki, ajaribu vile anaweza. Siyali, siyali alijiosha. Siyali jitu waki mzima mzima na kasema ta protect, wasea ta protect constitution. Wacha basi ya pige mboka. Mi siyezi kwa orezo, sitaki kwa orezo. Orezo ni pressure mze. Orezo huwani mpaka ashanza kuwana mvi. Iyo wera ni ngori, hata ukipewa ni noma. Lakini, kama umejitolea, kama umeamua kufuwa nguo lazima uoge. Eh, so, orezo ni yaoge. Na challenges lazima zikue. Eh, ile kitu tutu ngetaka ni ati, yangea chatu wa sewa wa, 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 wa protestu peacefully. Wasa wa siyaribu mali ya mse. Na hizo hizo ma, madinga za makarao ziko huku chini ya maji na ma abduction hizo ndio vitu mbaya